This lesson is going to be about substances that are in cells and in living things um, that are chemicals called enzymes. So we're going to talk uh, just about enzymes in this lesson. Enzymes, first of all, you need to know enzymes are proteins. Just like the other proteins that we've talked about, enzymes are made of amino acids. They are large and complex. So you look at proteins inside living things. They might form a structure like bone or muscle or hair. They might be a transport protein carrying things around. They might be a channel for things to move into and out of cells. We'll talk about those later. Or they might be enzymes. Now, enzymes are what we call biological catalysts. A catalyst is a chemical substance that speeds up a chemical reaction inside a cell. So an enzyme speeds up reactions inside cells. These are reactions that happen in the cell that help the cell to do what it needs to do, help the body to do what it needs to do. We call this metabolism. That's your chemical reactions. An enzyme speeds these things up. Without enzymes, these reactions would happen so slowly they wouldn't happen fast enough for you to survive. So you really need enzymes to live. Without them, you die. So enzymes are absolutely essential, vital to your life. One example of an enzyme would be an enzyme that helps for digestion. So when you eat your lunch, when you eat your breakfast, and you're digesting your food, the digestion happens because of all kinds of enzymes that you have in your mouth and in your stomach and in your small intestine. Enzymes like lipase, maltase, sucrase, lactase, and amylase. These enzymes take a long molecule like this and break it up into pieces till all you're left with is the smaller parts. Perhaps this is starch, and these enzymes break it down until all you're left with is glucose. That enzyme would be amylase. Now, enzymes are matched to the job they do. In other words, they fit the chemicals that they are working with and helping, to ha helping reactions to happen. They fit those chemicals and those reactions perfectly so that they only work with one reaction. They don't work on any reaction. You can't add any particular enzyme to any reaction and have it work. They work only with certain ones. And we say it kind of fits like a key fits in a lock. So we have the enzyme here, and we have something called the substrate. That's the chemical it works with. The substrate fits inside the enzyme just like that. Now, once activated, enzymes form a bond with their substrate, just like I showed you, and they form it at something called the active site. So along the enzyme here, you have an active site, and that's where the substrate can come in and form a bond. When this substrate comes in, bonds with this enzyme, it act, the enzyme helps to break it apart. And now you have two smaller pieces, just like I talked about with digestion. The other thing you need to know about enzymes is that they can be used again and again. They help the reaction, but they don't get used up in the reaction. So if you see, we start here with a set of um, chemicals. This enzyme works with just the yellow ones, see? It, it fits right in there in its active site. But when the reaction is finished, we, we're left with number four looks just like number one. This red enzyme hasn't changed in the process. Now, you need to know that enzymes are particular in their what, what kinds of environment they can work in. For instance, enzymes will only work with a specific temperature range. So we see here enzyme activity and temperature. This particular enzyme is, is very low activity when it's cold. Then it starts increasing activity as the temperature increases until we reach what's called the optimum temperature. This is the best temperature for this enzyme. It's most active at 40 degrees. And now as the temperature increases, look, it stops being active. At some point, it stops completely. We call this denaturation. So when enzymes are placed in heat, they denature. The active site changes shape and no longer fits with its substrate. 
So here's the substrate and the enzyme. If it's too hot, heat above 40 degrees, look, the enzyme changes shape, and now the substrate can no longer fit in the active site. We call this denaturation. You probably are familiar with protein and enzyme denaturation because you've seen eggs, perhaps, cooked. We start with an egg that looks something like this when it's raw. This clear part of the egg is, is made up entirely of a protein called albumin. And albumin, when it's heated, it is denatured. So we can see what that looks like when we cook an egg. Notice that the texture and color changes of the egg white. And this is due to a change from heat. The other thing that affects enzymes is pH. This is acidity of a solution. So if a solution is acid, or maybe it's base, it's got a high pH, then sometimes that can affect how the enzyme works. It could be denatured. The, most enzymes work at a pH of 7. Anything lower or higher than that, many enzymes are denatured by very low or very high pH. And finally, the other thing that affects enzymes by denaturing is salt. Here we have activity of the enzyme, and this is concentration of salt. You see at certain concentrations of salt, the enzyme is active, below that less active, and above that less active. Although salt doesn't affect enzymes as much as heat and pH do. So that's it for enzymes.